Well, hmm. joining us from Rhode Island is Judge Frank Caprio and his, his son, David Caprio, who uh, was there in the court and, and, I, and I believe um, the judge went on to mention him as well mm. later on when he was talking. So good to see both of you this morning. Um, Frank, why, mm. do you think, um, why do you think that what you said has called everyone's attention too much? I have my theory. I think it's because we rarely see judges being emotional in that way and I think it's something that, that you're known for, isn't it? Well, I think there's so much dissension in the world that uh, people expect that everyone's going to be very strict law and order. Uh, <clears throat> I've said many times that I don't wear a badge under my robe. I wear a heart. And this is a classic case where to render a decision based on the strict interpretation of the law would be manifestly unjust. And so I, I did what is right. You know, and, and I think taking all of the attendant circumstances into consideration instead of the strict interpretation of the law is just a human thing to do. It's, it's ex exercising some understanding and some compassion and some sympathy uh, for people who appear before me. Uh, and, David, we, we should say this is, this is part of a, a TV show uh, that you guys are part of in America. What was the thought process behind that? Why did you think that it was important to... To, to put this on TV and, for, for make, uh, for, and to let people see this? Well, good morning, Adel. The, the, it's really not a TV show. What my dad allows uh, to happen is to allow cameras to come into his actual courtroom. So what you're seeing is unrehearsed and completely spontaneous. And the message that he sends from the bench in acting that way has really resonated around the world. And us being on the show today proves just that. It's very interesting, isn't it? I, I believe when uh, you, you were talking to the elderly gentleman, you also brought in your son later on and mentioned how you'd like to take care of him. So, David, is he as good a dad as he is judge? <laughs> he drove us here tonight. So, hey! yes, he's still driving me around. <laughs> so, I'm guessing that's a yes. Right? You yourself... No, but seriously... <laughs> seriously, though... <laughs> what, he, what he does on the bench is just like he is uh, in his everyday life. Now that his courtroom is really a worldwide sensation, you know, he's approached all day, every day for people who just want to tell him the impact of what he does that has on them. And um, what has happened is some people completely spontaneously, without any request from us, started sending in checks to the court asking that Judge Caprio use them in his discretion to help people that might need a little bit of financial help. And, most, and they come from all over the world. And most of the uh, people that send them uh, have in, previously in their life had been through difficult times and had overcome them, and somebody had given them a helping hand. So the whole concept of pay it forward is living daily in the courtroom here in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, oftentimes, if you watch the cases online or in America here on television, uh, you'll see him uh, pull out a check that somebody has sent in to help so assist somebody in paying their fine. So the, the message of unity really has spread around the world right from his courtroom. I mean, it, it sounds fantastic. Listen, and of course... Is... Uh, sorry, go on, Judge, Judge uh, Capio, go on. Well... <clears throat> That is not a unique experience for me. I have the sum total of my experiences in life. My dad was an immigrant. He came here from Italy as a young man and actually peddled fruit from a push cart. Mm. And then his big job was that he became a milkman. And he would never, ever, ever not deliver milk, whether people paid or not, if they had children, even though he was ordered to do so by his superiors. But what would, we what would you say? I, I, just, I just want to ask you about something. What would you say? There is another argument to all of this. And, and, I, you know, when we all get the compassion and it's fantastic to see a judge showing his human side, but there will be some people that say, well, there are people who have broken the law. And if there's a 96-year-old man, he's broken the law, he could have put lives at risk, he may well put lives at risk again in the future, and, and it's your job to try and uphold that law and protect all other citizens. What would you, what would you say to that argument? Oh, I say it's a lot of hogwash. I hear that argument all the time. I hear people say, you know, the law is the law, you know? And I say, there are circumstances in everyone's life 
that should be taken into consideration. If a woman comes before me and she has five children and she's an unwed mother, and I know that if I force her to pay, pay her fine in the full amount, that her children probably will not be able to eat that night. Maybe they may turn off the electricity. Maybe she won't be able to put gas in the car to take the children out. A whole a host of things. Maybe she couldn't afford health care for the children. So we balance the equities. It's, Where it's I don't need my compassion and understanding at home. No, quite right too. Look, look, look Judge Frank. Uh, it, w over here, we've got a big debate at the moment about knife crime. Well, one of the big causes: harsher sentences, harsher sentences, first offences. Um, do you think that sometimes that doesn't work, and sometimes compassion and understanding is equally as effective, even when it's from the judge's bench? Well, I think the nature of the crime is very important. I mean, if it's a brutal crime, you know, depending if it's if it's a major felony, then I think in many cases a harsh punishment, you know, is appropriate, you know, and should should because I'm dealing with tr everyday traffic cases. I'm dealing with minor misdemeanors, and I have the latitude, you know, to exercise my discretion, and I do that liberally. Okay. Judge Capria, when I are remember, you coming? People... To, when are you coming to London? I've got three points on my license. I'd like to come into your court and get them clear if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm waiting for the invitation. You know, I love the UK. <laughs> I'll come over to you, don't worry. I'll come over to you. <laughs> well, look, it's been so lovely having you both on our show this morning. You've touched so many people. And I think it is that compassion uh, alongside sound judgment that, that people really need to see, don't we? Mm. It's, an, it's an uncertain world at the moment. And, and it's great to see you doing what you do. Thanks very much indeed. Mm. Good to talk to you. Thank you Thank very you much. For the, Thank you for the opportunity.